Alright guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today we are going to learn how to read direction in hexagonal systems, right? We have three directions here that we have to figure out. We have this one, we have this two, and we have this blue one, number three. Those are the three directions that we are supposed to read in this, in this diagram. But first of all, I need us to understand that whenever we are looking for directions, there are three things we are looking for, which is our U prime v prime and w prime then through this we get to apply this formula to find our t to have our four coordinates right so solving forward another thing we need to know is we we'll always look for our a1 our a2 and our z our a3 is not always required in directions all right so let's go ahead and begin to solve we'll be starting with this red line the first thing we want to do is we want to draw a parallel pipe around the arrow that shows us the direction. So this is our point of origin. We begin to draw this parallel pipe around it. Right? So basically what I'm trying to do is to draw out this image out of our drawing. So focus on the on the on the green arrow on the green um image i just drew here right i'll be replicating our red arrow right here and this is our origin can you see that nothing changed then this is our a1 and this is our negative a2 right right so some people might be confused that why did i call this a negative now this is how it works can you see this is our a2 which is positive positive and positive so any other side the opposite side is going to be negative so for example for this our a2 if we trace it down to this direction so this will be a negative a2 the anything that falls at the back here will be our negative a1 then same thing goes on this yellow line anything that falls here will be our negative a3 this is negative sign sorry a3 will be our negative a3 so that is why I've named here our negative A2. But if you see, if you look at, but looking at this now, if I should trace it out, that will be our positive A2. But I don't want to have too much lines right there. So that's how I erase it and just put our origin here. Then this is our Z. So let's begin to take our reading, which is the same thing as cube. You can always input it in form of our cube. Let's do that. So, looking at this image, do you agree that it is the same thing as this by the time we bring it back to our usual cube that we are used to, right? Then this will remain our A1 and this will remain our negative A2. Then this will be our C. Can you see that both diagram looks the same way? So, let's begin to take our reading. So, for our A1, remember, we are always supposed to read according to like serially. So, we start with 1, go to 2, go to 3, go to C. You get so now from our origin let's begin to travel to our arrow here we go one on a1 so we'll put one here right then to get to our a2 we travel the direction of a2 now it's not going to be one it's going to be negative one because we are traveling in the opposite direction as mentioned here so that's why this is going to be minus one then our z, we don't need to travel upward, which is going to be 0. Please, let's look at it here also. It's the same thing. We go on our 1. So we have our positive 1. How did I get positive 1? I got it from here. Can you see? It's telling us that anything that goes this direction is positive. Right? Then anything that goes to this back side is negative. So I'm going to erase that now positive and the other side is negative so that's why we have one then we continue on our journey we come to the arrowhead so coming this direction a1 is also one is a full line but it's negative because our positive a2 is at the back here this is where the positive a2 is so that is why we have a negative one here so with this we found our three unknown indices we are going to go ahead and input it into this formula here to find the other unknown which is our t so first of all when we apply it for our u u is equal to 1 over 3 
next up guys we are going to be solving for our yellow arrow here which falls on our negative a3 line so let's draw it out so drawing out our parallel pipes we We fall on this in which our arrow comes from this origin so replicating it here where it is easy to see this is our origin and the arrow comes this direction we agree that this is our origin and the arrow comes this direction right so look at it they are the same thing so i'm going to erase this now so we don't have um this original diagram looking all clustered and scattered so now let's label we know that this is our negative a3 minus a sorry negative a3 others again we know that this down line is our positive a1 this is our positive a1 right then this is our positive a2 and this is our positive a2 that's this direction is our positive a2 let me remove this so it doesn't look like negative so that's our positive a2 so by the time we begin to read our direction this is our origin so let's travel down to this head we go now let's um label we are looking for u prime v prime and w prime which is also known as our a1 a2 and our z right so from our origin here let me pick another color going from our origin right here we're traveling on a1 which is positive a1 we get to put down our one right then we travel to the head here yeah so traveling to this head now please take note we are not traveling on a3 we are traveling on line a2 can you see this this is the direction we are going to right look at this is the direction we are going to we are going that direction not not this direction we're not going on 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 this direction so we're not going on this direction this direction is our a3 right but instead we are traveling like this which is our a2 so let me erase and restart everything again so you get to see what i'm talking about right so this is where our arrow was right so let me pick another hink green so now first of all, we are traveling on line a1 this is our a1 as you can see right we traveled on a1 a1 so that's why we get to put down our one here okay let's travel again we are traveling on this line that is parallel to this line and this our line is the positive a2 so we are traveling on a parallel line to a2 so that is why this is our a2 remember that from remember that from the beginning of this video i told you a3 is useless when it comes to direction just focus on your a1 a2 and z so since this line this direction is parallel to our a2 and we are traveling towards the head of this arrow can you see we are traveling towards the head of this arrow so that's why it is positive so that's why we are going to record this as a positive one then we are not going upward which is zero yeah so let's repeat the step here again remember i said this is our a1 a2 and a3 so a3 is useless when it comes to directions in 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 um, hexagon hexagon um systems so from our origin we are traveling one on a1 then this is a2 excuse me then this is a2 because it is parallel to this i remember this direction is positive but if we had gone this direction it is going to be negative so we travel towards the arrowhead which is positive this is what i'm talking about here this arrowhead so that's why we recorded one one zero so i'm going to erase that now and we are going to do what we have to do looking for our v so first of all we need to look for our u because this is a u prime v prime and w prime so looking for our u again we say u is equals to one over three open bracket 2 our u prime is 1 minus v prime is 1 so i think this one should land us to 1 over 3 so put down our 1 over 3 which is our u right then the next thing to look for is our v sorry let me write that well v which is going to be v is equals to the same thing 1 over 3 open bracket 2 open bracket 1 
minus one. We are also going to have one over three one more time. Then now we are looking for our t. So now look at this t formula. We are not using u prime. We are using the u and v that we just solved for. So our t is going to be equal to minus open bracket one over three plus one over three which is equal to negative 2 over 3. t is equal to negative 2 over 3. Then our w falls back to itself. So we cannot go ahead and just jump by saying this is the answer. We have to get rid of the um 3 that is beneath here. We have to get rid of the fraction. So we multiply all through by 3. We go ahead by saying 1 over 3, comma, 1 over 3, comma, minus 2 over 3 comma 0 or multiply by 3 so this cancels this this cancels this and this cancels this so we get to fall here and say we have 1 1 by 2 and 0 for our u v c w all right, so let's go ahead and solve for the last arrow, which is our Z, right? So this is our Z here, this arrow. Here's our Z. So by the time we begin to solve, we get to, let me erase all of this, excuse me. Our Z is simple. We literally don't even need to open anything, but let's just do it. This is where the line is. It's the same parallel part as before. So this is where our arrow traveled. This is our Z, right? sorry so this is our z here it's the same shape so this is where our arrow traveled the positive direction of z so if we had gone downwards that would be a negative z sorry that would have been a negative z or it never went or it never went um downwards so this is our origin this is our origin and this is our z so the arrow traveled this direction so this is very simple from origin just went up from origin it just went up so we literally don't even need to stress too much the answer is zero 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 and our z is one but we are not supposed to jump let's just do it the layman way so first of all look for our u prime our u prime which is zero right which is our a1 it never traveled any direction in a1 so this is our a1 and this is our a2 remember i told you a3 is useless this is our a2 and this is our z so a1 0 v1 which is our v m v prime which is our a2 is zero then our z it went one direction so we get to input um we get to input that in this place so here we have zero and excuse me we have zero zero and zero so i think it's gonna cancel itself and give us zero the same thing happens here we have zero and zero which falls back on zero sorry erase all of this yeah then our w reads itself back so our u that we just solved is equal to sorry we're not using equal sign is zero our v is zero then our t is zero yeah if you had done u plus v this is our u plus v is zero that's on t then our w which is our z is one so this is the coordinates for the last one all right guys please subscribe to the channel and peace out